Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Lease of Gas. We turn now to a little poem called The Torch. Uh, this is a, a, a much unknown poem of Leaves of Grass. I love this little poem. I love to read it out loud, and we will enjoy doing it in a moment. Uh, this is poem number uh, 30 of the 38, so we are now moving towards the very end of Autumn Rivulets. Uh, again, autumn over related to the old, rivulets over related to the new, the flowing, that which is more uh, fluid. We'll obviously have to ask, why does this poem end up here uh, in this collection called Autumn Rivulets? Now, our assumptions are that you've been reading from that very first word come, that invitation word uh, come, all the way through all the inscriptions. Of course, we gave lectures over every one of the poems of Song of Myself, as well as everything to follow. We have given a set of introductory comments to Autumn Rivulets that I'm hopeful that you are already aware of. And then we just finished with that little uh, text on learning tests. I think this is also a text about learning and about showing the light. And there's a lot of Platonism and, of course, the Republic going on there. Um, we'll get to it in a moment. Let's, uh, first of all, begin, though, with our Nortons, as we often like to do. Uh, Nortons will tell us that this poem was first published in Drum Taps, 1865, and then Morton's will say this memorable vignette remained unchanged after slight revision in the text of 1871. We have often said that great poets show instead of always telling. And of course, Whitman does his fair, show, his fair bit of telling, but sometimes just at the moment you don't think that you're going to see anything different in Leaves of Grass. We get this poem, The Torch. Uh, by the way, uh, this is uh, the, the word torch will take us back to a march in the ranks uh, one great pithy torch you'll remember that compelling that compelling imagery in the tent let's let's enjoy now the torch on my northwest coast in the midst of a night a fisherman's group stands watching out on the lake that expands before them others are spearing salmon the canoe a dim, shadowy thing moves across the black water, bearing a torch, a blaze at the prow. Now, I love these kinds. I mean, there, there are some who will argue, well, here's the beginning of a whole lot of images poetry of the 20th century. I mean, go back and look at Ezra Pound's uh, Metro and you know T.S. Eliot's Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, and I think there is some of that notion of the genesis of some of this here. Now, obviously, we can read this poem both literally as well as figuratively, and we will obviously do both. Notice that we begin not on the Northeast, where Whitman spent his life, okay, but rather the Northwest. And then a little bit later, we're going to get to canoes. The only use of canoe is in this poem, and all leaves of grass. And obviously, we have something very interesting going on here because we have now placed this poem out there in the Washington State area, most likely, or the Portland, uh, Oregon area out there somewhere, on the northwest coast. Notice, we are in the midst of the night, right? And a fisherman's group stands watching. Now, the fact that we're in the night, later it will be black water, and the fact that we have watching going on, all of a sudden begins to play the game that we have played with so regularly in Leaves of Grass, that it's always been about looking. It's always been about curiosity. It's always been about wonder. In other words, Whitman is constantly inviting us as readers, I think, to be curious, to watch, to look ourselves. Now, what is it that we're looking at? Well, we're out on the lake, and this will take us obviously to back to Barnegat, right? That expands before them, and, and immediately you, you can go, oh, okay, Whitman's played this game before, where he is going to reference something very, very simple, very concrete, and yet it can be read, obviously, at some kind of metaphorical level. So we're standing, we're watching something that's expanding out in front of us. Others are spearing salmon. And the spearing salmon, the great eye here, is obviously going to, to, going to give us a sense of what's going on there in the Northwest. Oh, okay, I got it. So fishermen spearing salmon. And then, of course, the use of the canoe, again, the only time used in leaves of grass, will then put us to native populations that Whitman had a very strange stance with, as we've said already a number of times in earlier lectures. Notice, we've got the interesting words, dim, shadowy thing, the canoe, a dim, shadowy thing moves across the black water, and then bearing a torch, to take us back now to the title, a blaze at the prow. You'll remember the use of the word prow in Song of Myself 10. 
Now, what exactly is going on here? Well, obviously, it's just as Norton says, a, little, a, a, a really remarkable little vignette. It's like a, it's like a picture. It's like taking a photograph with words, no question. But I think there's some other stuff going on here, and I think the challenge now at 2A is to try to read this poem both at the literal and as well at the figurative level, and I think we'll figure out why Autumn Rivulets is where this poem now will reside. Think of it this way. Notice that we've got this, this kind of context where there is night, there's black water, that is to say there's uncertainty, we're standing in a group, we're looking out to some kind of canoe that's happening out there on the water, and then all of a sudden, in the darkness, there is the light. And I think this is the key. Whitman is always wanting to bring us back to the idea that even in the worst imaginable darkness, there always has to be the light, because the light flows out of and transcends the darkness. And here, of course, autumn rivulets can be easily applied. At 2B, I love the symbolism of the torch because it's one of the symbols that Leaves of Grass has been playing with. The idea, for example, of the Statue of Liberty, the holding of the torch, the idea that light attracts, and especially those who are worried and fearful, obviously the night, obviously the black water, the uncertainty, and now all of a sudden the torch is the important, the light. Obviously there's all kinds of biblical references going on here as well, and Whitman's audience would have easily found their way, their way there with the idea of, of course, Plutinus and the Logos and all of that at 3A. Obviously as well, we can play other games. Conrad's Heart of Darkness comes to mind as a, as a simple one, or T.S. Eliot's Dry Salvages, the third of the four quartets, and we've given full lectures on those titles at LearnStrong.net. Finally at 3B, when you pick up a little vignette poem like this and you look at it, um, what has been your favorite torch in the middle of the black water? What is it that gets you through? And is it possible that maybe your study of leaves of grass is one of those, one of those torches? I, I hope that that's the case. Thank you.